Today, I want to help you with transitions. These are also known as the animations that help you move from one slide to the next. Sometimes we get caught up with such a big variety that's included with the presentation software that we include too many, kind of playing around with everything, and those can actually distract your audience from what you're trying to present. It can look goofy or childish or not connect whatsoever. I want to share with you today my top four transitions. These are specific to Keynote, but if you have these options, they'll work in any presentation software. And I'm going to show you this in general, and then I'll have videos that will go along with this that will walk you through the steps to create these transitions, both on Keynote for the iPad and Keynote for the Mac. Here are my top four transitions to use to really come across effectively as a presenter. The first one is called cut or none in keynote terms. This is a simple transition that puts the next slide up after your current slide. It's great when you wanna show a series of slides quickly since no time is taken to move between slides. This is also abrupt, which can be used when you wanna make a startling point and shockingly switch from your current slide to the content on the next slide. For example, if I just wanted to show you various architecture photos, I would go through and just use this cut, which in Keynote is not including a transition, and it goes through several very different buildings. Beyond the classic use, you can also use cut to provide an element of surprise or an abrupt change to evoke emotion. For example, if you were to go from this happy party scene to this woman helping a homeless man at the holidays. Very different emotions in a very quick cut transition. Now the second one of my top four is called Dissolve. Dissolve is a very common transition that smoothly fades out the current slide while simultaneously fading in the next slide. This is a gentle way that is soothing and easy on the eyes. It's very common in photo slideshows to use this transition to move from one photo to the next. It's also great for showing subtle changes or when you want the whole section or presentation to feel like one piece that all fits together. For example, here are some nature photos that we could show and gently dissolve from one photo to the next. You can see it fading out one and bringing in the next one in a way that seems very smooth and very intentional. Along with being a great gradual transition, dissolve can also help you show changes over time or changes through seasons like this. We move either literally or metaphorically, from chilly winter to warm, fresh spring to sunny and relaxing summer and into the golden fall. That's two of my top four transitions. On to number three. This one actually has two parts, but for number three, I'm going to call it fade through color black. It's a transition that has a lot of options and to keep things simple, I'm demonstrating with this color first and then I'll show you a second one. If most of your presentation has a black background or if you're gonna be in a dark room or if night is a focus of your presentation, either literally or symbolically, this is the perfect transition for you. Here as we move from this scene of the earth, the black transition is almost like closing your eyes and opening them again. Very smooth, doesn't distract, and seems to move naturally from one image to the next. And that's fade through color in black. But like I said, I'm going to show you two versions of this today that you can use. So the fourth, or the part B of my third favorite transition, is fade through color with white. If most of your presentation has a white or bright background, if you're gonna be presenting in a bright room or if day is a focus of your presentation, either literally or symbolically, this is the perfect transition for you. Here's a move from this snowy scene to more snow. That white seems very natural. It's almost a fun way of a flash going off when you reveal people's faces in an image like this. Or going to a sky scene or the surf rolling in. And now for a few bonus transitions that if used well, can be effective, but too much or in the wrong way can be distracting. So use these four wisely after you've mastered the first four I showed you. Here's the first bonus one. This is the cube transition, or what I say four points. It's a little more dramatic and it can be distracted if it used wrongly. However, if you have an opening and three to four points and a conclusion, it can be a significant way to signal to your audience the movement and progression of your presentation. 
you would start with your title or opening. You can have more than one slide here. However, you would simply use cut or none for your transition until you are ready for point one. Then your presentation rotate down to show one of the six faces of the cube that'll be part of your slides. So now point one is seen as a different face on the cube. And again, you can have many more than one slides for point one, but only use the cut or none transition to change between those slides. Then, when you're ready for point two, you'll rotate either left or right to your next slide. You seemingly rotate the cube to show a new face with your second point. Same as before, show what you want, then move to point three by rotating in the same direction as the move from one to two. At this point, if you have three points, you can skip to the next option. But if you have four points to your talk, then rotate the cube once again, still moving in the same direction as points one and two and from two to three. Finally, once you're ready for your conclusion, rotate the cube up to reveal the bottom of your cube and show your concluding content. I will actually grab a cube puzzle like this one or a box and put my points on sticky notes attached to each side to keep me organized so I can see in 3D what I'm showing on the screen. One of the most famous examples of this transition was used at its best when Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone. He used an object animation instead of a slide transition, but it works the same way. I'll have a link in the video description here as a reference for you to see. That's one of my favorite bonus transitions, but I've got a few more. The next one's a lot of fun. There are a few transitions you can use together that subtly resemble the movement of a deck of playing cards. So I've just called it playing cards. This can be used well when you wanna show options, alternatives, or even revealing a surprise. The move in animation is like sliding one card on top of another. This can show something replacing something else or a new level of importance. The switch transition that will happen next can be used to show that you're replacing one thing or a piece of content with another, or simply an alternative option like shuffling your deck of cards. The reveal is a great one that probably should only be used once in a presentation for a dramatic moment revealing an important truth conclusion, call to action, or surprise. It could be used well more than once if your presentation is a series of points revealing truths found from research or an investigation. Here, it reveals one special card. Like I said, that transition and set of transitions looks kind of like playing cards. If used well, it can be very effective, but you want to use it sparingly, just like on the cube transition, you only use that to change your points but I still got two more for you. This third bonus is great when you're presenting information in a linear fashion like a timeline. Apple calls it the push transition and it literally looks normally like one slide is pushing another slide out of the way and taking its place. However, if you set up the graphics on your slide like I'm demonstrating in a video linked in the video description here, it can look like you've got one giant timeline that you're moving across and you simply have your data listed on your slide, and as you move, you reveal start to finish that timeline. Now, sometimes when you're giving a presentation, you don't wanna move just forward, you might wanna reflect back earlier on the timeline. Well, if you change the push direction from moving from right to left to left to right, you can create the same sense that you're moving back and then forward again on a timeline. So you would transition normally, pushing it from right to left, but then when you want to back up, you would push it from left to right. And then bring it back to the end again. This illusion is a great way to show a timeline or any kind of image where you want to span from left to right with more than it fits on your screen. I'll show you in the video in the description how to set all that up so it looks seamless when you present it. This can also be used with a vertical push when you want to show height, scale, working towards a goal, or just a skyscraper. Instead of showing this image, you could do this. And now we're moving up the skyscraper all the way to the antenna on the top. And of course, you could have a dramatic reveal with a flag or a point at the top in your final slide. There you have it. That's how you use transitions effectively in any presentation, but especially in keynote 
for Apple. In the videos linked in the description, you can find how-to videos for you to set up those transitions, whether you're using Apple Keynote on a Mac or on an iPad. If you master the skill of the art of transitions, you'll be a more effective presenter and you'll be able to sell your idea, move your audience to action, or simply communicate what you want to present.